Good morning, everyone. If you're in the West Coast, good afternoon on the East. Good evening if anybody is joining us from the other side of the pond. It's great to, uh, to imagine you. Can't see you today, but we can feel your presence. I'm uh, Tad Bradley from the Cassini Collection, and I'm going to be joined shortly by Julie and Paul from Gather Away in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Um, just to first, uh, a shout out to any of the rest of you that are out on the West Coast, I know times are, are challenging right now, in particular because of the fires. Um, air quality here in Seattle is pretty horrible. Julie and Paul are dealing with smoky skies in, in Jackson today as well. And if anybody's coming to us from Oregon or Portland, our, uh, our thoughts and our hearts go out to you guys there. I know it's just incredibly tough times, California as well. So please, um, you know, please stay safe and, and keep healthy. Um, today, we're going to uh, jump into a area of the country, at least in the wintertime, that I think a lot of us forget about um, as a great tourism destination. Um, earlier this year, we introduced Julie and Paul from Gather Away, and they um, did a great deep dive into the greater Yellowstone ecosystem as a whole, all kinds of activities that one can do there, the incredible wildlife viewing, all the way from Jackson Hole up into um, Yellowstone and up to Bozeman and big sky country of Montana. But today we're gonna to focus on, um, on winter in these same areas. And again, I think a lot of us forget that uh, tourism doesn't stop in Yellowstone or in Jackson in the winter time. If you're a skier, you probably know Jackson Hole well. Um, I had a great time skiing there several years ago. Um, but there's incredible wildlife viewing as well in the Jackson Hole area and in Yellowstone. Um, and we're gonna dive into what makes it so special in the winter. It's, um, it's certainly a winter wonderland, which, which Julie and Paul will get into. Um, the wildlife viewing is in some cases even better during the winter because of those, those white backdrops and the concentration of wildlife that you get in certain areas of Yellowstone and Jackson Hole. Um, of course, there's far fewer crowds unless you go to the, the ski hills, but I, I would imagine this year may be a great time to visit to go skiing because of the reservation system that will likely be in place. So another um, you know, silver lining to what we're dealing with at the moment. And, uh, and then there's just an incredible amount of epic outdoor adventures to be had, both in the Jackson Hole area as well as up into Yellowstone. So I'm gonna let uh, Julie and Paul take it away from here and, and let us dive into all of these things. As usual, we are recording this, so if you uh, miss anything, you can check it out on our YouTube channel uh, where we archive all of our webinars. And if you have questions, feel free to enter them in to the Q&A or the chat field and we'll get to those um, either in the middle of the webinar or at the end. So Julie um, and Paul, over to you and Jackson. Well, hi everyone. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks for the intro, Tad. Um, we'll just jump right in and talk a little bit to start about where we are and where we operate. So um, we're based here in beautiful, beautiful Jackson, Wyoming. Um, and we operate in Grand Teton National Park, into Yellowstone National Park, and then all the way up through um, the Paradise Valley, Bozeman and kind of this general big sky Montana country. Um, so why, you know, most of our trips will be based either out of Jackson Hole or up in the northern range out of Gardner or Cook City, Montana. Um, and the reason for this is the incredible wildlife opportunities, the access to the interior of Yellowstone, and then also the additional recreational activities that, you know, Tad was mentioning. Um, and it is also possible to link the north and the south, so to cover the whole region, um, either by scenic flight or snow coach in the winter. So I'll turn it over to Paul to talk a little bit more detail about our destination. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Paul Brown. I'm the lead naturalist guide for Gather Away. Um, I've been leading educational programs in the GYE for about 20 years and I've been I'm fortunate to have worked on several research and conservation programs over the years in the area as well. Um, I'm really, really lucky to call Jackson Hole my home. This is my permanent home now for about the last 20 years. Um, I grew up on the East Coast and really was into to birding when I was a young, a young boy. When I came out here, I, I really found my, my home. This is where I love to be. I want to talk a little bit about Jackson Hole. Um, the Jackson Hole Valley uh, is surrounded by mountains and that's really why we're, we're called Jackson Hole. It's an old trapper's term. 
Uh, the trappers used to call high elevation mountainous valleys holes, and they would often name them after one another. Um, Davy Jackson was the fur trapper who this valley was named after. And back in the early 1800s, it was often the fur trappers that were exploring these areas and looking for beaver primarily. Um, but today we, we call this valley Jackson Hole and, and all around this valley we have incredible scenery, we have incredible wildlife. Um, you know, the average snowfall in Jackson, the town of Jackson at the southern end of the valley, is about 100 inches. And so here's the town of Jackson down at the southern end of the map. Um, you know, areas to the north, you know, up around Moose, Wyoming, and areas further north into northern parts of Grand Teton National Park, those areas might see anywhere from, you know, 200 to 300 plus inches of snow. And of course, the mountains around the valley might get over 400 inches of snow. So that's one of the key reasons why wildlife are so abundant at the southern end of the valley. We, we have migrations bringing elk, moose, deer, bighorn sheep, down to some of the lower elevations and, and just minutes north of town, you know, just in the, the National Elk Refuge, uh, for example, we have this huge population of wintering animals, often anywhere from five to 8,000 elk on the refuge, you know, but other species as well. So, um, you know, going out to see the elk on the refuge is a, is a huge draw. The refuge offers sleigh rides, which can take, you know, folks to, really view the elk in, in really close proximity. The elk have gotten accustomed to those sleighs. Um, but in addition to the thousands of elk, you know, many other animals use that refuge. It's, it's a place where, you know, besides the sleigh rides, people really don't go and it's an area set aside for the wildlife. So you know, incredible opportunities to see, you know, sheep and bison and, and deer and coyotes and, and fox and eagles. Uh, and sometimes even wolves. We've, we've had good luck in recent years uh, in, in winter watching wolves on the Elk Refuge. Uh, so that's always a, a great treat. Um, so in addition to the wildlife, which is of course core to an amazing experience here in Jackson Hole, it's also an outdoor enthusiast's playground in the winter. Really can incorporate as much activity as you want and it can be accessible for all ages, so you don't have to be, you know, a super sports woman or man to come here and enjoy the winter. You can get out on snowshoes, do a really great introductory, you know, just try it out, uh, snowshoe in the national park, uh, cross-country skiing in the national park or in the national forest, and then, of course, epic downhill skiing at Jackson Hole Mountain Resort. Um, again, as Paul said, the average snowfall for the last five years was 459 inches. At Jackson Hole Mountain Resort. So it really is just an incredible downhill skiing destination. Um, additionally, uh, you can get out and experience a true northern pastime with dog sledding. We have a legitimate operator here. Um, you can hot dog spring to hot springs to Granite Hot Springs, which is a really great way to spend a day. Get out, get cold. You actually get to try your hand at mushing the team um, and then spend some time soaking in the hot springs before coming back to a you know a warm hot chocolate or getting out you know fat tire biking is a big um, big thing here in the winter so lots of opportunities great for families um, and itineraries can be tailored so that you know it can be as active as you want if you've got a multi-generational group you know we can get you know the kids out that are active and maybe do something that's a little bit you know less active if there's you know members in the group that are not you know, as as game to to have those experiences. Um, in addition, you know, Jackson Hole is a world-class destination and we have a great unique offerings um, for people to be able to have some experiences that are not the standard. So we can do local workshops, um, workshops with local artists, followed by a dinner in their gallery. Um, scenic flights over the national parks is an incredible perspective to have, you know, the parks from the, from the air sleigh rides along the Snake River, and then you arrive at this beautiful riverside camp and have lunch or dinner or hot chocolate and heated teepees. We can take um, groups to the Raptor Center, Teton Raptor Center, and they'll do 
a raptor demonstration. It's a local nonprofit that rehabilitates and educates on raptors. You can get up close and personal great photographs, um, learn about their efforts. And then even a primitive skills workshop with a local naturalist who takes you out and talks about the early settlement of Jackson Hole. And especially in winter, you know, talking about how these trappers came here and managed to survive in such a harsh winter climate. You know, fire building skills and you know, the tools and, and tricks of the trade that they used to get by here in Jackson. So really can have, you know, the wildlife is core to the experience, of course, and a highlight for everyone but you can really weave through a lot of unique and interesting other activities, both adventure, culture, and you know, a little bit of luxury in there as well. And of course we have great you know, access to, to interior Yellowstone in the winter as well. And, and Yellowstone is a, a difficult place to visit in winter. Uh, most of the interior roads are closed to wheeled uh, private vehicles. So you have to travel on an over snow vehicle in the winter to get into the park. You know, Yellowstone was our very first national park set aside by Congress in 1872. It was primarily set aside to protect the hydrothermal features. You know, Yellowstone is an enormous volcano and the, the volcanic activity under the park is, is fueling all this, this hydrothermal activity. So we get to see an incredible scenery in the park in the winter, the geysers, the hot springs, fumaroles, uh, paint pots, all of these thermal features, um, you know, in the winter are, are even more stunning because of all the snow on the ground and the winter scenery. Um, so access to, to Yellowstone from the Jackson Hole area you know, starts at Flag Ranch at the southern end of Yellowstone. And we typically will travel into the park for a day, you know, heading up toward the West Thumb area and then on to the Old Faithful area, exploring some of the thermal features along the way. We also, um, if we're focused more on the northern range of Yellowstone based out of Gardner, um, we can travel from the north from Mammoth Hot Springs down toward either the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone, beautiful River Canyon, you know, incredible winter scenery, high elevation area of the park. You know, much of Yellowstone is, is around 8,000 feet in the interior or close to it. So, so we get tremendous amounts of snow in the winter in the park. But we can also travel down to the Old Faithful area and of course, see all the thermal features, um, you know, spend some time, you know, around that section of the interior um, or on a private charter, we can actually do both out of the northern part of the park, see the canyon and see Old Faithful in that area. Um, so there's really an amazing amount to see, um, but very few people really enter Yellowstone in the winter. And that's one of the things that, that makes it so special. It's, it's really a unique time to see it. Um, you know, beautiful winter scenery. Now this year, um, for the most part, all of our programming in the park will be done um, as day tours. The, the park and Zantara, the park concession, decided not to open any lodging inside of the interior this year. So normally we could stay at the Snow Lodge, which is a, a beautiful hotel right at the Old Faithful area and, and kind of base out of that uh, for winter trips. But this year you know, they decided to keep it closed due to COVID. So our trips into the interior will be day trips this year. Um, you know, traveling into the interior, you know, we're, we're generally either on tracked vehicles, uh, snow coaches that use tracks or snow coaches that use the big wheel tires. And these vehicles basically spread the weight of the vehicle over a much larger surface area so we can stay on the trails. Yellowstone doesn't plow their roads in winter, so they do groom the trails kind of like a ski area would. So you're, you're driving on many feet of snow, sometimes three or four or five feet of packed snow. And those over snow vehicles uh, spread that weight so the vehicle doesn't sink. Uh, but traveling into the interior in winter means um, you know, guided experiences. Um, there's also the opportunity to go snowmobiling in the park as well. Um, but everything's done with guides, you know, few much fewer visitors in winter, and the scenery is just stunning and beautiful. The, 
the temperatures we, we often experience in the interior um, can, can really range from you know, extremely cold um, to, to really temperatures that might be in the 20s and, and low 30s. But I would say that, that when visitors come in the winter, you know, being well prepared with good, you know, appropriate clothing is really the key to enjoying the experience. So um, there was a day last year um, where I shot this video. We were at the Old Faithful area walking around Geyser Hill. And this is the, the Wapiti Lake Wolf Pack. And they walked right past us. Amazing experience. And this was shot just with my iPhone, so it gives you kind of a sense of how close these these wolves were. Um, you see, the the group was really uh, was really amazed by what we were seeing. So, you know, if we're based in the northern range and heading into the interior, you know, we're, we're generally getting on a snow coach at Mammoth Hot Springs and then traveling south. Um, you know, we'll make our way down from the northern range on snow coach either to, to the canyon area and the Hayden Valley area, or we can head down, you know, all the way to Old Faithful on snow coach. But the northern range, um, you know, that we focus on wildlife is really one of the better viewing areas um, in Yellowstone um, for many different species. So just like Jackson Hole is a, is a great area for wildlife in winter, animals are coming out of the higher elevations, concentrating at the lower valley areas of, of Jackson Hole. The same thing happens up in Yellowstone's northern range. So the northern range of the park, um, you know, area between say Gardner, Montana and Cook City, Wyoming, has some of the lowest elevations anywhere in, in Yellowstone. So about 5,300 feet to, you know, about 7,000 feet. And these lower valleys are where a lot of the, the my, wildlife will, will migrate to. So animals, you know, generally move off the central plateau. They either come south down to Jackson Hole or they go north up to the northern range. And so the road between Gardner and Cook City is the only road that the Park Service plows in winter. All the other roads become snowmobile and snow coach trails, but that northern range road is plowed. And that gives us access really to some of the best wildlife anywhere in the ecosystem. Um, you know, we have species like the elk and the bighorn and you know, deer and moose that we frequently see in the northern range. Um, but it's also known really as the best place in the ecosystem to watch wolves in the wild. And some of our best wildlife viewing occurs uh, either in the Little America Valley or the Lamar Valley of Yellowstone. So our trips when based out of Gardner in the Northern Range really have easy access to that Northern section of the park. Um, they're really, really quite stunning. So with the wolves, you know, really being most visible in the Northern Range, you know, we have big wide open valleys, you know, great opportunities to view. And, you know, it's not common to see, you know, hunting sequences, but we, we almost always can, can predictably see wolves in the Northern Range on our trips. Um, it's one of the best places in the world. This is a little sequence of of wolves testing bison. Um, they were not successful bringing a bison down, but it's just an amazing experience uh, to be able to watch something like that in the wild. So similar to, you know, trips that are based in the south and Jackson Hole, there are great opportunities both in the interior and in the northern range for getting out and active as well. Snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, snowmobiling, so again, lots of opportunity to get out, stretch your legs, and especially in the Northern Range, because there's you know, limited area that's accessible by vehicle, it allows for a lot more time to get out and explore, because you're not trying to cover quite as much ground as say maybe in the summer where the full park is accessible and 
and you're trying to hit more sections of the park, you can really focus and have the time to explore and enjoy the outdoors and get out in winter. I mean, for people that don't have snow, or even if you have snow, you probably don't have this much snow. You know, you go into Cook City in the middle of winter and the snow's up to the roofs of the building and that in and of itself is remarkable for many people that are coming to visit us here. So just to jump back to this map really quickly before moving on, um, the next place is the Paradise Valley. So we were just talking about trips that would be based, you know, out of Gardner or Cook City. Um, and for those trips, usually your jumping off point is Bozeman. And so this area right here is the Paradise Valley. And then Big Sky um, Ski Resort is located right about here. Um, so there's still lots of opportunity outside of the park to continue to explore. So the Paradise Valley actually gets less snow than the interior of Yellowstone. Um, and therefore is great winter wildlife range as well, especially for some of the animals that need less snow, like the pronghorn ant. The pronghorn is up in the left uh, hand corner. There's bighorn sheep, elk, and deer. So lots of wildlife viewing that's opportunities even outside of the park. Hot springs at Chico Hot Springs Resort, kind of quirky, quirky historic lodge where you can go and, and soak after a long day out in the cold. Um, and still snowshoeing, cross-country skiing. And then at Big Sky, you've got great downhill. You've also got cross-country skiing as well. And then some great winter ranch stays and then dog sledding and sleigh rides as well up here. So if you're only focusing on the Northern Range, you can still have that wide array of experiences that you would in Jackson Hole as well. And then, like I said, Bozeman would be the jumping off point and it has you know, great airlift options and a fun downtown, good food scene. So a really nice place to, to start or end or both your trip uh, into the Northern areas of, of Yellowstone National Park. And I think that covers the bulk of it. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it doesn't even scratch the surface. <laughs> now that was great, uh, succinct summary of of, um, of all that can be done in in the in the, ecos the Yellowstone ecosystem during the winter time. And then I think maybe Julie, just going through the logistics here of what's open and when, and then we do have a few questions uh, sure. after that. Yeah, definitely. So the winter season usually uh, we recommend starting around. You know, December, December 15th is when the interior of Yellowstone uh, opens up to the over snow vehicle or snowmobile traffic. Uh, so if people are interested in going into the interior, that season goes from December 15th through the end of February. At that point in time, they close the interior access to Yellowstone, but there's still a ton that can be done through, I would say, the end of March, you know, up in the Lamar, that's still accessible. And then also in Jackson Hole and ski season even goes into, I think April 11th this year. Uh, so you still, you'll be definitely spring skiing by that point in Jackson. Uh, but typically we have our, our winter season is December through kind of end of March, early April uh, with the interior access from December 15th through uh, end of February. And then I was saying we can do, you know, trips based kind of round trip in and out of Bozeman, round trip in and out of Jackson, and then one way, um, it's, you know, a high dollar experience, but, you know, doing snow coaching through the park this year, since it's day trip access, uh, you'll be doing, you know, snow coach charter in the south, and then a snow coach charter in the north, or a private scenic flight connecting Jackson and Livingston or Gardner, Montana, depending on the size um, plane or aircraft that you're in, you can do it by scenic flight or helicopter. And then as far as you know, group size, we didn't touch on that. Um, up to seven travelers would be in one guide and one vehicle, ensuring that everybody has a window seat. And then if you're going up over um, seven, we'd be doing two guides and two vehicles. Cool. Um, Paul, I don't think you have enough clothes on for a negative 60 Fahrenheit. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty, pretty amazing. That's the coldest day I've ever experienced in Yellowstone. And I, I figured I'd put that in because it's kind of a fun topic to talk about. You know, it, it does get cold in this ecosystem. Typically, you know, Yellowstone can be one of the coldest places in the country on any given day. And I would say that that day it probably was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the coldest I've ever seen it in Yellowstone Park. But 
gosh, everybody went home with some bragging rights. We passed that, that thermometer around and everybody took pictures with it. Um, yeah, I, I've never, never seen it quite that cold ever before. And, and that's an increasingly rare thing in Yellowstone nowadays. It mm. used to be very common that temperatures of negative 40 you know, would occur every year. And, and we're seeing that less and less now, but there are still those times when it can get incredibly cold. Um, but those are some of my favorite mornings, you know, frost on all the trees and, you know, frost on, on the, the bison, they'll, they'll be all frosty. If you ever see those pictures of the frosted bison, um, those are always on those really cold mornings for at negative 20 or colder. Wow. So it's, it's really a special, a special time. And, and when it is that cold, it's also clear and the sun comes up and the temperatures warm quickly as the day progresses. That's going to be what the temperature is first thing in the morning, but it will warm, you know, 30, 40, 50 degrees oftentimes above that wow. low temp. So by the afternoon, it'll feel good. The sun will be out. Uh, you know, it might still be negative 10, but it'll feel a lot warmer. Right. Yeah. We don't, we don't have a lot of humidity here and not a lot of wind when it gets cold. So it, it often, you know, is I get the comment a lot that, gosh, it doesn't feel as cold as it is. But with those still conditions and the sun out, you know, it, it's very manageable uh, if you have the right gear. And we're, we're always happy to, to provide lists of things to bring and, and, uh, and make sure folks are Extra prepared. blankets in the car. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a couple questions here. And if anybody has questions, go ahead and enter them in. Um, air access to Jackson and, and Bozeman during the wintertime. Um, I think you know Bozeman has pretty regular daily flights from a lot of places. Jackson, um, more limited, but I think it does increase in the in the winter. I know Alaska it just announced increase. some direct flights from Seattle and San Diego and the Bay Area. Um, but how is that? What what does that look like for for winter time in both places? Typically, typically in winter, um, the air access to Jackson increases significantly. We'll see this year, of course. It'll be you know. Uh, probably not as as much as it has been in past years, but the mountain resort actually partners with the airlines in order to increase the direct flight access. So um, we usually have direct flights from LA, DC, New York, New York Atlanta, Dallas, Dallas, Houston, and now this year Seattle, San Chicago. Diego, Chicago, Minneapolis. So it's actually quite, um, quite, quite accessible. accessible. Yeah. Um, in the winter. And then of course, if you are, you know, coming from an airport that doesn't have direct access, you're connecting, you know, through Salt Lake or Denver. And Salt Lake is literally 30 minutes takeoff to touchdown. So it's a pretty easy connection, a small, nice airport. And um, you can have a short connection in. And then also Denver um, is an hour flight. So, so even the connections are, you know, pretty manageable. Do you guys run into weather issues on a, on a regular, semi-regular basis in Jackson? Or is it pretty reliable um, outside of a, a pretty nasty storm that you're going to be able to get in during the winter season? Yeah, I would say it's pretty reliable. Jackson Hole, you know, has many flights, and of course they're they're very used to clearing the runways and, and getting everything, you know, open. Um, but there are times when when the weather is really bad where where flights get canceled. So it's it's definitely possible. But I would say of of any winter destination, they're about as good at handling winter weather as any airport could be. Okay. You know, they're, they're very used to it. And it's not like a, a Sun Valley or a Aspen where, you know, you're really rolling the dice if you're going to get in there on a plane in the wintertime. Yeah, I, I would say it's, it's much better, better chances than some yeah. of the, those mountain, you know, really tough mountain airports. But, um, but, you know, it does happen. We do, we do have cancellations due to the weather at times. Yeah, we often recommend, you know, if people are coming in for, say, you know, for an itinerary and they have the flexibility to come in a day early, you know, it's, it can be nice to just build in an, an early arrival before you jump right into your, you know, your once in a lifetime activity that you planned. Right. Um, so. And another benefit, though, of working with a local partner like you guys is that you can then, should anything happen with air arrivals, you know, you're on the ground rejiggering and juggling. The scheduling as best you can yeah. but better than being on your own um and then just a question about the snow coach charters or the snow coaches in the interior of yellowstone 
the difference in price and experience, um, numbers of people between doing a private charter and doing one of the scheduled uh, scheduled trips into the interior? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So pricing in the winter from the Jackson side is the um, is seat is fluctuates based on the time of year with of course the holiday period being the highest price um, and then also some of those holiday weekends um, president's day martin luther king day and then around um spring break but that doesn't apply to the snow coach charters because that's later in the season um so you're typically it's about 13 people on a snow coach if you're doing a shared I expect that number to be nine this year. Um, the regulations this year for summer was a maximum group size, including guide at 10. Um, so my expectation, they have not announced this yet from the park, but my expectation would be that that is going to be similar for the winter is that they'll reduce the capacity of those snow coaches. And for that, a day trip from the southern side um, of Jackson Hole up, you know, Flag Ranch up into Old Faithful for the day, you're looking at between 250 to 350 per person um, per day to go in on a shared coach. Um, on a private coach, you're looking at between 2,500 and 3,200 to take over that coach um, privately from Jackson. Um, up from the north, um, because they have just made the modification to change the access, um, the overnight access at Old Faithful Snow Lodge, they haven't yet announced what the day tours will look like, um, but to give you an idea, if you had wanted to go into the day before, um, it would be in and out in a day, in the same day from the north, would have been 266 per person, so about you know 270 per person. So I would expect once they do announce those full day programs um, to be comparable, although you know don't hold me to that. And then a charter from the north in um, is about starting at 2000. So a little bit of a, and then you can add, that would be for an eight hour charter and you can add additional hours. Um, so you could do, you know, a 10 hour charter, a 12 hour charter, and especially, you know, for photographers who want to get in there and spend some significant amount of time this year without being able to overnight, you know, we definitely recommend adding some additional time. And for non-photographers as well, if you want to get out and especially if you were going to do the canyon and Old Faithful and wanted to have time to maybe, you know, spend some more time on the ground outside of the vehicle, you know, adding some extra time, you know, getting up to a 10 or 12 hour day. Um, so you're adding uh, about 250 an hour for all the, for each extra hour that you're going to um, do of snow coaching as a private charter. Gotcha. Okay. That's really helpful. Um, I think that's that's all we have question wise. Um, just wanted to let everybody know that those videos, which were absolutely epic, Paul, um, of the wolves, will uh, will have a link to those. If you are um, interested in promoting a winter itinerary and you're looking for assets, marketing, photography, video assets, we'll have uh, in the follow up email a link to some photos as well as those videos that you're free to use for your own marketing. Um, and then also we did link to the winter sample itineraries, one which is based in Jackson Hole, the other which is based in and out of Bozeman um, that, uh, that you would have seen in, the, um, in uh, our email last week, but we'll also send out a link to, to that in the follow-up. And any questions, feel free to come through to any of us um, on, on, on this part of the, uh, of the country at this time of year. So thanks everybody for joining us today. Thanks, Julie and Paul, for uh, taking the time to take us through the upcoming winter season. And um, we uh, hopefully look forward to welcoming a lot of uh, your guests to, to Yellowstone and Jackson in the, in the coming months. Take care, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Thank Bye, you. Julie. Bye, Paul. Bye, Thanks. everyone.